you may never have heard of MAMS, but they're all around us. Among other things, they help keep us safe, help clean our clothes, and make electronics easier to use. But that's only the beginning. University of Michigan researchers are hard at work to take these tiny marvels where no MAMS have ever gone before. Nancy McCauley has the story. MEMS stands for Micro Electro Mechanical Systems. And even if you've never heard of them, they're already in products that touch your life every day, from smartphones to toasters to safety systems in your car. And University of Michigan professor Kensel Wise has been at the leading edge of MEMS technology from the very beginning. Microelectronics, as we know it now, integrated circuits started back around 1960. And as the technology was being developed during that first decade, it was logical to ask the question, could the same technology that we were using for microelectronics be used to create the devices that would reach out and measure variables like pressure and acceleration and, and translate those into electrical signals that could be processed by computer. And that's how it started. Sensors depend on getting into applications. You, you have to be interdisciplinary if you're going to work on sensors. It's just starting to blossom right now. We're right on the edge. I mean, it's We're right on the edge. And, and a lot of that has been brought about through work that's been done here at Michigan. We, I think, have been in the top four or five in the world for the last 40 years. Circuits, memory, and processors have gotten both smaller and more powerful. An average laptop today is many times more powerful than early computers that took up entire buildings. MEMS are bringing a similar curve of increasing function and miniaturization to sensors that monitor things like pressure or flow, and simple machines such as pumps or electrical stimulators. Tell me about those little sensors. What's in them? You see some of them here on the back of a penny. These combine a hermetically sealed pressure sensor with a microcomputer, a full-out microprocessor, a micro battery, and an energy scavenging system to recharge that battery, and a wireless link, all inside a little perylene coated glass package. These would fit in one corner of the iris in the eye and wake up every 15 minutes, take a data point, go back to sleep, and then once a day you can trigger the readout and the information would be automatically sent to the doctor's office. These are about a millimeter wide and about two millimeters long, so they're really tiny. This is a gas chromatograph, that is the gas analyzer. If you just kind of imagine um, a device the size of a, of a little shuffle iPod that would fit in your pocket and can screen for things like lung cancer and tuberculosis. And this is without being invasive, it's just yeah, a breath. Just exhale breath, that's all it is. MEMS technologies aren't just on the drawing board. Some are saving lives right now. Rick Smith is a senior electrical engineer at Integrated Sensing Systems, or ISIS. He showed me a pump fitted with a MEMS device that measures the density of liquid fuel. The UN is interested in this device because in many third world countries, it's been known that the transporter offloaded some of the fuel and replaced it with a cooking oil or a lower quality, lower cost liquid. And by the time it gets to the aircraft, it may be so tainted that it's unsafe. And there's actually been crashes because of it. Our device will tell if there's a problem. Nadir Najafi is the president and CEO of ISIS. He says the chance to partner with the university is one of the reasons he located his company and the jobs it has created in Michigan. When we started the company, we needed to use a MEMS facility, which since it's a branch of microelectronics, is very expensive to both start and also maintain. So the first few years of ISIS, uh, we use the facilities at the University of Michigan until we're better established. And also, university has one of the best facilities in the world. The staff are among the best in the world. Those world-class resources include the state-of-the-art Lurie Nanofabrication Facility, which underwent a recent $100 million expansion and renovation. Those assets, plus the presence of MEMS pioneer Kensel Wise, attracted Angelique Johnson to the University of Michigan for her Ph.D. 
And we wear these full bunny suits and everything so that we don't get any dust or debris there. I work with Dr. Wise because of the projects that he does in the medical device space. Um, not only interesting, fun, exciting technology, but technology with a purpose and what I call a greater purpose, you know, of really changing people's lives and, and even saving lives in some cases. So you're starting your company. Tell me your vision. What, what is this company going to be like? The company right now is we're going to focus on cochlear implants as an initial target market for our device. So a MEMS cochlear implant, so we can increase the number of electrodes on a device. And if you think of electrodes um, as pixels in an image for hearing, the more electrodes you have, the higher resolution and sound you have, just like the more pixels, the higher resolution and image that you have for a picture. As we foresee, it will be based in Michigan, using their Lori nanofabrication facilities for early stage research and development. And then we're going to outsource manufacturing to a MEMS foundry. So there could be some jobs created. Oh, definitely. In the 1980s, Khalil Najafi pioneered implanting sensors that could record bioelectrical signals in the brain. That research, in combination with MEMS technology, might have staggering implications moving forward. I've got some of our intraocular microsystems here. So I see the pressure sensors and I see the uh, circuit chip. And the microprocessor. And the microprocessor, yeah. There's no question that we are going to see, and not too distant of a future, the ability of people being able to think about stuff, and as they think about stuff, things happening around them, right? Because you're recording signals from the brain, and then those signals are used to control other devices, and those other devices might be a computer screen, or it might be some prosthetic part that somebody is using. Thanks to huge advances in MEMS foundational technology, Things that once sounded like science fiction now seem on the cusp of reality. Because I'm a doctor, that's how I know. And MEMS pioneer Kensel Wise thinks it's just the beginning. I really think we ain't seen nothing yet. All kinds of really neat projects that I think over the next few years are going to go a long way toward really helping people. And, and that's, that's what's exciting about it.